I, uh, my speech won't be like as long as that. <laughs> so, so, I wrote some like that. Um, <laughs> firstly, uh, Victoria and I uh, would like to thank Gary for his kind words uh, and for helping to pay for this wonderful wedding. Um, I would also like to thank uh, Victoria's family for welcoming me, welcoming me into the family for such a long time. And uh, uh, we've built some terrific, enduring relationships during that time. And you know, I love you all. Uh, I'm feeling like you so. um, I know that Victoria always speaks very highly of you uh, uh, and the impact you had on her when she was growing up, and your collective efforts to bring her up, as it were. Uh, in particular, uh, I know that. She uh, obviously talks very highly of her nan, and of course, granddad John, who all sad, can't be here. So, um, thank you to my family uh, for uh, putting up with me uh, for the last uh, something years. That's very kind of you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I've obviously shared many, many memories, uh, too many to, to mention here with you. Um, Although I will particularly remember uh, David's hilarious injuries over the years. <laughs> Thanks for that, I'll keep those. Um, <laughs> and this is obviously another fantastic memory to add to that list. Um, thanks, of course, to my mum and dad. Um, so my mum's, Gary said, can't be here, um, which is a shame. But uh, thanks to my dad. Um, between you, you've taught me uh, love. Uh, honour, respect, dignity, uh, loyalty and devotion, the things I hold dearest uh, and the things I'll carry forward into our marriage together. Uh, Dad also taught me uh, engage brain before open mouth, uh, which I don't always do, Dad, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and and Mum uh, taught all of us how to chase a child with a wooden spoon um, without ever catching them. <laughs> so, it's a shame she's done ever had to Massive thanks to Louise, of course, uh, uh, my wife and I. <laughs> Would like to thank you sorry, uh, for your fantastic efforts towards planning and execution of this day. And it's been spectacular and it will continue to be as the evening goes on as well. And I say thank you. We're thankful to you for that. Uh, the bridesmaids, uh, you all look. Oh, did you just have that? <laughs> 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 Moving. Sorry. Okay. To the bridesmaids, uh, you all look beautiful. <laughs> Hold on, guys. What are you saying? No, it's not really. She's not even real. I'm going to <laughs> so, <laughs> you do look beautiful, just to put that out there. Um, uh, again, um, Victoria and I are extremely <coughs> proud that you are part, uh, part of our special day. Um, and I'd also like to thank Amy and the bridesmaids as well for uh, their planning of the Hindu. Uh, and Hindu part two, the cluckany <laughs> uh, in Wigan. <laughs> so, yes. um, I'd just like to, Victoria and I would like to uh, give Lauren, uh, uh, Amy, Abby, and Naomi some gifts that we've bought for them. Come so on, if you want to come up come and collect those.
Oh god, she's gone. <laughs> she's gone. Okay. All right, so uh, on to uh, Dan, uh, who most of you will know. I don't know. Uh, Dan's my best man. Uh, I've known Dan for uh, 30 years, and I'm going to address you directly if that's all right. I'm extremely happy uh, that you're my best man and you agreed to be my best man. Um, I want to personally thank you for having my stag do and for uh, keeping me sane throughout the many years that you and I have known each other. Uh, your advice and your willingness to listen to me uh, and to be patient as well uh, has been a, a major contributory factor in, making, in me making sound decisions such as this one um, and also uh, in, in me being who I am today. Uh, so I respect you mate uh, and I'm proud to call you my friend. So, thanks, thanks really. um, and also Victoria and I would like to extend our thanks to everyone who's coming here today to celebrate. Uh, obviously it wouldn't have been as fantastic as it's been without all of you. Uh, so finally, to my incredible pride, <laughs> my Victoria. Uh, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. I don't think uh, everyone that knows me knows that's the case. Uh, they will know what you've Okay. <laughs> what you've meant to me over the years. Um, you're, the, you're, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me, but you're also the best mother uh, Joshua could ever have asked for. And you've given me just the greatest gift a man could ever, ever, ever have asked for. He's amazing in every way. Um, you're my world. I live and breathe for you, and you know this. Uh, to see you smile lifts my heart, my spirit, and uh, sorry. <laughs> from from the moment we met, uh, when you were wearing Ian Wright's shirt, <laughs> <coughs> signed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got that. Don't doubt we got for her. <laughs> uh, to the moment you. Uh, you, you were on the phone with my mum within 20 minutes of, of us meeting. Uh, I knew right then that you were the one for me. Um, and, and from the moment you, you hammered a, a screw into the wall uh, at our first flat, uh, I knew that I'd never be able to work you out. Uh, <laughs> I was so proud of myself. Um, th thankfully, thankfully, I like a challenge. So it's good. Um, you're, you're every bit as beautiful today uh, as you are when I proposed to you uh, 11 years ago and when we met. Um, and today, by agreeing to be my wife, uh, you've made me the happiest man alive. Um, and so I'm going to get too emotional. Um, over to uh, Walter Mitty. Uh, sorry, Dan. Um, who might tell a tale or two? Yeah. It's interesting to hear Lee say that uh, he's known me 30 years and I was his first choice of best mate. It's not entirely true, is it, Lee? No. <laughs> but he did say it went easy on him today. I'll be his first choice of best mate this next week. So. <laughs> See what this is going to be a word. Um, for some of you that don't know me, um, I tend to leave things at the last minute, and um, it comes no surprise that uh, I did actually write this speech on the way up here yesterday. Uh, stopped at the service station on the way. Um, I wasn't sure I'd love the content of looking around, I'm not entirely sure if it is appropriate, but um, I went for a quick dress rehearsal with. Uh, with, 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 but for a quick rehearsal, the old people's home at the top of the road. I don't think it went, I think it went okay because they're all pissing themselves again. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, thanks for the thank yous. Uh, Trevor and Michael, the ushers, executed your duties impeccably. You wouldn't believe how much Lee doubted your ability to ensure the guests are <laughs> sitting on the correct side of the chair. Um, secondly, to Amy, the maid of honour, the bridesmaids, Abby, Lauren, and Naomi, and of course, Dakota, the flower girl. Um, I think we all agree they look lovely. Thank you for ensuring that Victoria made it to the ceremony on time because by all accounts she put up quite a struggle. 
Right. Uh, 1986 was an eventful year for many. The uh, Soviet Union launched the Mir space station. Britain and France started work on the Channel Tunnel. As a space shuttle Challenger disaster, a nuclear reactor at Chernobyl went into meltdown, causing the biggest nuclear disaster in history. For Lee, all of this pales into insignificance, as it was the year a seven-year-old homesick boy arrived at a boarding school and took a shine to him. So much so that in order to go some way to addressing his homesickness, the Guardians prized the 11-year-old Lee away from his friends and placed him in a twin room with that seven-year-old. That seven-year-old was a course man. Now, I knew I'd done the right thing when, after the lights went out on the first night, I asked the question, Lee, will you be my friend? <laughs> and he replied, with two words, and one of them was off. <laughs> so I went to sleep securing the knowledge that I'd made a friend for life and that one day I'd be standing right here. <laughs> this also gives me the opportunity to share some experiences of Lee from his more formative years that many of you will not know. Now, one of my enduring memories of Homefield was the number of pupils that took up smoking. Lee and David being two. In hindsight, I understand that was because it's one of the most distressful environments ever. Smoking was of course banned, and in the days when caning was condoned, or in Lee's case, earned in kudos, to be caught smoking resulted in a good whipping. Now, Lee, as we know, is a very intelligent individual, but sometimes I think he forgets his limitations. He devised a cunning plan for all the smokers to take up the long jump in a ruse that see them all standing in the sand pit at the far end of the sports field. The staff would, of course, think they're practicing the long jump, but in reality, they're all smoking. The clincher for the group was when Lee explained that the condensation from the cold winter air would mask the smoke from Eric Taylor. Perfect, could you not agree? Unfortunately, as we all know, smoking is addictive. So by mid-June, <laughs> it became quite evident that the clouds emanating from their mouth 